Zach Brown has taken another swipe at the reigning world champions Red Bull and their team principal Christian Horner. He believes Newey's departure is just the beginning and that more dominoes will fall after his departure. Horner, known for his no-nonsense approach, has recently found himself in the crosshairs of controversy with allegations of a toxic work culture swirling around the Red Bull camp. According to reports, former Red Bull employees have come forward accusing the team of fostering a hostile environment with long hours and high-pressure situations taking a toll on staff morale. What is it about Red Bull's method that draws such polarising views? Is it sheer competitive spirit, or is there something more? Horner, never one to shy away from controversy, has a reputation for his relentless drive to win. But at what cost? To reach the top, you have to push the boundaries, Horner has been quoted saying. But Brown counters, suggesting that while success is critical, the journey and the working environment matter just as much as the results. This isn't just about leadership styles, but about the philosophy of team management in the high-stakes world of F1. Is the aggressive pursuit of victory worth risking a positive work culture? Or is this intensity the very engine that drives the success of teams like Red Bull? Christian Horner has fired back, vehemently denying these claims and labelling them as nothing more than sour grapes from disgruntled ex-employees. However, critics argue that this isn't the first time Red Bull has been embroiled in controversy surrounding its work culture. Could there be truth to these accusations, or is it all just a smear campaign aimed at destabilising one of F1's powerhouses? McLaren, however, is no stranger to underhanded tactics and poor treatment of staff and employees. Their shocking dismissal of drivers such as Fernando Alonso and Daniel Ricciardo a prime example. The tactics of signing Ricciardo's replacement, Oscar Piastri, also drew criticism from fellow teams and fans. And it's not just in Formula One where McLaren's ruthless streak has been on display. Over in the IndyCar world, driver David Malukas found himself on the receiving end of McLaren's swift dismissal, leaving many scratching their heads. At first, Arrow McLaren management stood by their injured driver, saving his seat for a possible return to action. But as he missed his fourth race of the season, the team decided to terminate his services. With allegations of a cutthroat culture permeating the McLaren camp, it begs the question, are results all that matter, or should teams prioritise the well-being of their drivers and staff? This isn't just about leadership styles, but about the philosophy of team management in the high-stakes world of F1. Is the aggressive pursuit of victory worth risking a positive work culture, or is this intensity the very engine that drives the success of teams like Red Bull? As fans and followers of this thrilling sport, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of environment do we celebrate? The cutthroat, win-at-all-costs attitude that has historically defined much of Formula One, or a more balanced approach, where the welfare of the team is as important as what's achieved on track. This debate goes beyond Red Bull and McLaren, touching the core of sportsmanship and competition. What do you think about the culture within top F1 teams? Is Zach Brown right to call out what he sees as a flaw in Red Bull's armour, or is this just the reality of competing at the pinnacle of motorsport? Let us know in the comments below.